Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Roman Saragosa, and I'm very grateful to be here today. I'll just start off with some general questions, and then we'll get more into kind of like projects you've been working on, if that's okay with you. Yeah, sure. Perfect. So growing up, like, what did you want to be like originally? Yeah, well, growing up, I uh, I almost, I always wanted to be an actor. Um, I grew up in a very actor family. My father's an actor. My two older sisters were actors and um, not as much anymore. But, uh, you know, I just grew up in a very performing arts family. So uh, I didn't really have a choice. I, it was just thrown into my life. And I'm very grateful for it because I love performing. I love um, the collaborative art form that is acting. So, uh, yeah, you know, there were other things when I was a kid, for sure. I wanted to be a firefighter. I wanted to be a, uh, an astronaut. I wanted to be a soccer player. That was like my, my, uh, my two paths were either soccer or acting, um, to, uh, extremely reliable, uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> professions. So, uh, but yeah, I just got, I just got lucky that I found something that I loved early and I just gave it my all. And, uh, and still, you know, there's ups and downs, but I'm just very grateful to be pursuing something I love. Can you remember like a first like project you worked on as a kid, like your first launch into acting? Uh, first project I worked on is like a pro first professional project or first just like anything project? I just say anything project. Okay. Um, I think the first notable thing I did was in third grade, I played the prince in Cinderella. And uh, that's one of my still, I think, favorite characters, because uh, 10 minutes ago is just, I think, one of the most beautiful songs. Uh, and yeah, so that was a fun show. Got to play a leading man, <laughs> you know, and uh, I always loved doing that. And how did you get into the industry? Can you remember what your first job was? So I was thrown into the industry early. And so I, um, I was doing commercials a lot when I was really young and my parents, you know, would, uh, you know, threw me into a bunch of different commercials. So I got a uh, Chuck E. Cheese, a bucket, a bunch of Chuck E. Cheese commercials when I was young. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so we can probably find those somewhere on the internet, uh, which is, which is <laughs> hilarious to think about. Um, and I think that was my first you know thing, but then my first like TV guest star, I was, 13 and I booked a pilot for Nickelodeon that didn't end up getting picked up but it was uh, like a big turning point in my life when I and my family just moved to Los Angeles from New York mm -hmm. and I started to feel like uh, I, I could do this I, I, I want to do this in my life for sure of course I was still young still figuring it out but but I loved it what do you feel like the difference between theater acting and film acting is like for you personally Oh man, there's so many differences. There's a lot of similarities for sure, but there's a lot of differences the more that you do it, I feel like. Um, for one thing, what I love about theater is I can go do the start. I, I go from the start to finish every, every day of work. You know, I'm going from beginning to end every day. And so I can kind of, um, my process is a little different. Uh, it's a little bit more, uh, it's it's the same every day. I can kind of come in and say, okay, I'm doing my warm up. Da 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 da. I do the show and I finish, and I can kind of put it aside um, when I'm doing the performances, at least. For TV, every day is different. You know, it's every script. You know, we're we're shooting Ghosts for CBS right now, and you know we're on episode shooting episode ten and eleven. And, you know, it's completely different. I'm in a completely different place than when I was when we were shooting episode one, episode two. And and uh, we're just shooting different material. My character's in a different place. I'm in a different place. And, you know, some days we shoot um, episode 10, scene three. And then the next day we're shooting episode 11, scene 21. And you have to kind of bounce around. And it's uh, a little confusing to stay organized but you have to just stay on top of that make sure you're doing your homework and all of that uh, so it's just a different process for that I would say mm -hmm. uh, or organization and, and uh, just the way that you're working is is incredibly different but the acting does translate for sure mm -hmm. in my opinion how do you handle the stress of 
kind of that like the day-to-day life of working on film tv meditation yoga (laughs) and getting enough sleep that is my recipe for sure um i love meditation i love yoga Uh, i feel like that balances me calms me and uh Without it, I don't know what I would be doing personally um, because I'm such a physical person. Mm -hmm. I love working out and I love, um, like, that's one way that I maintain healthily, um, physically and mentally. Uh, And, uh, and yeah, getting sleep and, and and also just like the biggest thing is enjoying it because it's easy to kind of get exhausted. And, you know, we're working sometimes like 12 to 16 hour days. So, it's exhausting. Every day is just, it's a lot, but you just have to kind of, you know, some days just swallow it and enjoy it because you know, it's going to be, it's going to be gone soon. And which is really scary to think about because we're, we only have a couple more episodes that we're shooting and then, then uh, we might take some time off waiting to see if we'll get a season two or more episodes. So um, yeah, I just got to enjoy every day. That, that you're on set enjoy every moment that you're you know getting to act before we move into some ghost questions here kind of about enjoying the process what do you think your favorite part of your job is my favorite part of my job that's such a difficult question for me because I feel like if you would have asked me when we started this project I would have said something very different than now um I would say my favorite my favorite part of this project would be the people. The people are amazing. This cast, the crew, everyone is so just incredibly kind-hearted and talented and just you know so supportive. I couldn't have asked for an, a better cast. It's like I'm amazed at at how, you know, lucky I am. Uh and uh, you know, I, I'm I'm the youngest in this in this cast, so I have a lot of people who are helping me navigate this. It's my first time being a series regular, so it's um, it's been really nice having this cast and crew to uh, to be there, fully supportive and loving. So yeah, I'm uh, I'm very very grateful for them. What do you think makes someone easy to work with? What makes someone easy to work with? be prepared um be willing to play like have fun on set you have to be willing to play you can't feel so stiff you have to just be free and just have fun because if you're not having fun then that's not acting right it's literally play acting uh and uh and just being kind like just being a good person because it's such a collaborative art form you know you're navigating your director and the camera operators and your other cast members and your own your own obstacles in your own head and stuff so it's 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 a lot of um you know being respectful to everyone else and yourself Mm -hmm. how would you describe yourself as an actor how would i describe myself as an actor um that's actually a very good question. <laughs> I haven't had to think about that. How would I describe myself as an actor? I am. Um, I'm an actor, one that I, that loves theater. Uh, I love to dive into a character. I am, uh, but also an actor that loves to bring himself to any character. You know, I have a thin veil on. A lot of what you'll see in my acting is me really bringing myself to the character a lot because at the end of the day, that's the reality. When I'm there performing, I am playing a character, but it's it's me. You know, you can't disguise that. Um, and I'm also, um, I'm an actor that is just incredibly grateful to be acting whenever I can. So I hope that answers the question. I did answer the question. Do you think there are people or mentors that have inspired you over the years in the entertainment industry or outside of the entertainment industry? So many mentors. Um, Right off the bat, Randy Reinholtz, who's the artistic director, uh, or who was the former artistic director of Native Voices, um, was a big, is and was a big mentor for me. Uh, He 
I've worked with Native Voices at the Autry. It's a Native American theater company. I've worked with them for the last 10 years. Pretty much grew up with them. They had a lot of my opportunities I've been able to uh, to have in my life has been through Native Voices and I'm just so grateful for them. And, and Randy has just taught me everything from, Randy and Jeannie, his wife, have taught me any, everything from, you know, performing on stage to cooking eggs. You know, they were my like godparents, I almost like to say. Uh, so them, my dear friend, Sean Taylor Corbett, who started as my mentor and now is like one of my closest friends. Uh, and yeah, the, the, I have a long list because I believe mentors is an amazing way to to learn about life you know why not learn from people who are ahead of you in the stages of life you know who have made mistakes or who have learned things through their triumphs why not talk to them about how to navigate this and uh, so I've learned just so many things and and um, I'm just so grateful. And now I find myself mentoring people, which is really cool. And I think as a mentor, you also learn stuff from your mentees, and uh, which is exciting. And I think it's it's part of the circle of life, in my opinion. That's a really good transition. I'm going to move into kind of talking about projects you've worked on and places you've worked at. So mm-hmm. I'm going to start out with OSF. When did you first decide you wanted to be a part of OSF? Oh, OSF, the Oregon Shakespeare Festival. Um, I had no idea what OSF was before I auditioned for it. And that's honest truth. I I was not, you know, I loved theater growing up. Um, I just wasn't in like the whole regional theater game. That was just not my world. I was living in LA, doing more film and TV. And, uh, and through Native Voices, I got an audition because a play that I had previously done at Native Voices, Off the Rails, was being commissioned to uh, to go to Oregon Shakespeare Festival. So I auditioned and I was like, what is this OSF? Okay, whatever. And, uh, you know, I booked it and I didn't know if I was even going to take it. I was like, oh my God, five months is so long. I don't know if I can leave my life in LA for five months. Uh, but ultimately, Randy Reinholz and Jean Bruce Scott, his wife, uh, were the ones who really were like, you have to do this. Um, it's going to be great for you. Trust me. And, uh, and then I went up for the workshop that we did that fall before the next year that we produced the show. And I just got to visit OSF and see shows and meet people. And I fell in love with this amazing community. This, this is Disneyland of theater, what it feels like. It's, it's absolutely incredible. And then, you know, and then I ended up staying for three years. So, and I'm so grateful for OSF, so grateful. What was the shift like going from living in LA to living in Ashland for that long period of time to work on those shows? Oh, it was very, very difficult. Uh, I went from, you know, living in Los Angeles, a lot of people, a lot of cars, the beach, just different lifestyle to living in small Ashland, Oregon. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it was, it was tough. You know, I, uh, I thrive, I used to thrive on um, chaos and, uh, and, you know, loud noises, you know, I grew up in New York City, you know, my first apartment that my family lived in was connected to a fire station. So for me, it was like hard to fall asleep when there was too quiet outside, like I wasn't good at that. And then I moved to Ashland, where it's just so quiet. Mm -hmm. Um, And, and then I ended up falling in love with it. I fell in love with city i fell in love with the the just the atmosphere of the of of ashland and uh and then you know all the theater all of the uh all of the vegan restaurants you know stuff like that it's it's uh i i really fell in love with oregon and in in its hall as well so yeah i'm very yeah again just absolutely grateful for ashland and oregon do you have like a favorite memory or like a funny story that sticks out to you from your years at OSF? Funny story. Jeez, there's so many. Uh, I was there for three years and so many crazy things happened. Um, one at the top of my head was I had uh, an appendicitis. Um, so like my appendix was like about to burst in my body. And it was like after one of my shows of Oklahoma that I was doing and I came home and I was like, I'm not feeling so good. 
and I don't know, I took a bath and I went to bed and my body started like shaking uncontrollably. Long story short, I got my appendix removed that night and my understudy who understudied me in two shows had to go on that next day in a double of both my shows. And, uh, and he did it and he killed it. Hyun Min uh, absolutely killed it. And uh, yeah, and it just really showed me one, so grateful for my health because that was so terrifying. And two, um, you know, you have people to cover you and, and it's okay to take some time off and to recover. Yeah, so I'm just very grateful that everything worked out, uh, <laughs> you know, and um, yeah, I'm grateful I had some good friends taking care of me. Mm -hmm. So moving on to um, This Is Their Land, I saw the promo video for This Is Their Land, and um, I thought you told me that when we spoke in Ashland that you were going back to school, and is there a part of that that you're, because you're producing that, so can you tell me a bit about the producing process and what it's like, because you're acting in it, you're producing it, can you tell me what that process has been like for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I um I went back to school fall of 2020 and graduated this past uh, spring in 2021 because I took some time off while I worked at Oregon Shakespeare Festival. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a a film that one of the students uh, pitched about the Modoc War, which happened in Oregon. You know, a few like like an hour south of Klamath Falls, and. I was interested because I'm like, what? All right, you know, who's writing this piece? And you know, the guy was a native, so I was like, what's going on here? Um, turns out, you know, it's an amazing script, and so I got involved because I was, I wanted to make sure that this guy made this film correctly with in, engaging with the tribe, hiring native actors. So um, yeah, I, I got, I got uh, hired to be one of the producers. It was a senior thesis for our school, mm -hmm. and. And it was just an amazingly difficult and also just so rewarding journey that we're still on right now. We're in post-production and we're figuring a lot of things out and it's really coming together, which is so exciting. But, you know, half of our film uh, was translated uh, by, uh, by our amazing uh, language consultant, Joe Dupree. And so half of our film is in the traditional Mukluk language. And... And yeah, we've, we're engaging with uh, descendants of the characters in the film. We hired, you know, half, more than half of our actors were native. And so for me, it was just like such an amazing project to, uh, to be part of and to feel like I was, you know, I was, you know, a, a big part of that. It felt really, really, really great. And it, it made me realize, hey, I can do more of this. I can do this. I can I can be the change that I want to see in Hollywood. I can be the change that I want to see that I didn't see growing up. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a good uh, eye opening experience and also showed me how difficult this is and uh, filmmaking. You know, we had a pretty big budget uh, and it was hard. It was hard. It was very, very difficult. We were shooting on location where the war actually happened at wow. the Oregon California border. And it, you know, day one was 30 degrees outside and oh. day three was like 80 degrees outside. So it was an interesting journey to say the least, but uh, we had, we got some amazing footage, got to work with some amazing actors. So yeah, it was, it was a fun time. Do you think that you want to continue producing projects in the future? <laughs> Yeah, I definitely want to continue producing projects. I think I want to also get more into writing and directing again. Mm -hmm. You know, I've directed uh, a little bit in college and wrote a little bit in college. I want to get back into that as well. And uh, yeah, I think I just really want to make projects that one, make my communities proud, makes my family proud, makes my ancestors proud. And and lastly, make myself proud because um I think this medium can have such an impact on our communities and 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 people you know more, you know more oppressed communities. We, you know, once you see yourself represented, you can kind of it changes your mentality. You're like, you know what? Maybe I can be Spider Man. Maybe I can be Superman. Maybe I can be President. You know, seeing that representation can spark so much passion in in people. Mm -hmm. 
Before I go on to talking to you about ghosts here, I have one more question for you about mm -hmm. that. Um, what's it like being a Native American actor in Hollywood in this moment? It's an interesting moment. So I, um, I identify primarily actually first as a mixed race. I'm a mixed race actor. I'm, I am, uh, uh, you know, of Akuma Oltam and Mexican descent on my father's side. And then my mom's actually from Japan and her family is uh, from Taiwan. So Taiwanese Japanese. So, um, firstly, it's interesting in navigating that as a mixed race actor but also to highlight Native American stories right now, I think it's just an incredible time. We have reservation dogs, you know, created by Serling Harjo and Taika Waititi, which is an amazing show. Uh, and uh, Rutherford Falls, you have just, uh, re what is the other one? Um, oh, is it Resident Alien? I think that might be it. Forgive me if it's wrong. Um, there's just like a bunch of in, uh, amazing um, shows with native writers, native stories, and uh, I can you can see a shift happening. You can really see a shift happening when you see native people as showrunners. You know, not just actors. You have native writers. You have native showrunners. You have native people behind the camera. It's it's uh, that's the change you need to see because just having a native actor playing a native character is just not enough. Thank you so much for answering those questions. And yeah. now we can move on to Ghosts, which is really cool, yeah. which is not out yet. But I'm really excited to watch it. Can you tell me a bit about it? Yes. OK, Ghosts comes out this oh. Thursday on CBS at 9 PM. And it's been quite a journey. You know, as I was saying before, we are on episode, we're shooting episode 10 and 11 right now. And on Thursday, this Thursday in three days, um, we will be premiering episode one and two in our hour premiere. And I'm just so excited for people to see the show. It's such a fun show. It's based on, or it's an adaptation of the BBC version of Ghosts. So they have their own version and now we're making an American version. And our version of Ghosts centers around a couple who inherit this uh, mansion in upstate New York in the Hudson Valley. And unbeknownst to them, it's haunted by um, nine ghosts. And these ghosts uh, just live in this purgatory uh, in, in, in this home, and they can't really escape this home. And they dream of being uh, ascended. They want to, like, get out of this purgatory, right? Um, and then our protagonist, Sam, hits her head after a really nasty fall and can now see and communicate with these ghosts. And, and then all the craziness happens. So it's, uh, it's, it's a really good time. We Rose McIver and Udkar Shamukar are the two leads. And it's just an amazing cast, an ensemble cast that I just can't wait for people to see. You know, we have a Viking. We have me, a Lenape man from the 1520s. We have uh, a Revolutionary War soldier. We have a, a hippie. We have a Wolf of Wall Street guy. We got so many people, like a 1920s jazz singer. We have such an amazing cast and people who are, one, incredibly talented improv and comedy actors, but also just, you know, amazing people that I think people are just going to fall in love with. The reviews seem to be really good so far, and you're getting called out in particular. I'm wondering how exciting it is to premiere a show on a major network. Oh, God. It's exciting. But it's also so terrifying. It's so <laughs> terrifying. Um, you know, I've been, I have been trying not to think about it. You know, it's, it's, it's such a weird aspect of TV where you shoot it, and then you just wait until people see it. You know, it's the opposite of theater where I'm working, 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 and then opening night. Okay, well, let's do this. See, you know, I'm gonna see if people like it. I'm gonna be there, right there with those people, and we'll see how how it's received. Um, versus this, it's like, okay, we shot it months ago. You know, we shot our pilot back in December, so it's it's uh, it's it's <laughs> it's it's an interesting process one to, to definitely get used to but also it helps because you release you have to release that pressure you have to release the worry because there's nothing you can do you know you did your best you shot this you shot the episodes and now 
you just got to wait and see if people like it. And if people don't like it, as I'm sure people won't, because that's just inevitable, that's okay. You know, as long as we can reach some people and, um, and someone feels represented, someone feels seen and someone enjoys it, um, you know, I'm, I'm happy. Did you yourself watch the British ghost before working on this? I watched the like f I watched like three episodes of the British Ghosts and I loved it and it was so good and then I had to stop because we were it was like right before we shot the pilot and I was like okay I'm done I'm done like this show is really good I'm getting in my head about the pressure I'm putting on myself so <laughs> so uh yeah we ended up um I ended up like not uh, watching it but I want to watch it now that I like you know once we're done filming I kind of just want to watch it to you know, just just enjoy it as a as a viewer because it's an amazing show. It has like ninety six percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Like that is, that's a hard bar to live up to. So you know, it's but also very grateful that 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 show has succeeded so much for us to to uh, you know step 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 in as well. So yeah. A couple more final questions for you here. Mm -hmm. What was the audition process like for this show? Oh my gosh, my audition process was. A very short audition process, which, you know, I almost want to not talk about it because some people will be like, what? That's insane. That's what it's usually like. And I'm like, no, no, it's not. But my audition process was I had a Zoom audition on a Tuesday. I got called back for Thursday and I tested on Thursday and I found out I got it that evening and I drove down to LA on Friday and we started shooting on, on that following Tuesday. So I got very, very lucky because I've tested for pilots before where you are, you know, you have a callback and then you have another callback and then you, and then you test in front of your the director, producers, executives, and then you test again in front of 30 people. And it's so nerve wracking. Um, I'm grateful I didn't have that, uh, have that um, process with this one because I think, you know, it's so easy to psych yourself out. You know, uh, usually before tests, you also have to sign contracts. So you, you're like signing your life away before you even have the part, which is so weird to me. Um, so yeah, it, it can be just so nerve wracking when you just don't want it to be. And uh, I'm just grateful for this process was incredibly easy. And uh, it was honestly one of the easiest auditions I've ever gone in and one of the biggest roles I've ever booked in my life. Can you tell me a bit about your character and how your character ties into the show? Yes. So Sasapis is a Lenape man from the 1520s. He is a sarcastic, grumpy old man who also acts like a child <laughs> at times because he's like the youngest ghost in regards to when he died. He died like, you know, his mid early 20s. But then he's been dead for 500 years. So he's this wise, old, grumpy man that died young. So he lashes out like a child sometimes. Uh, and it's so fun to, to also be this condescending, sarcastic person that is like, you're an idiot. But then another moment is like, why did you steal that? Like, you know, it's, 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 it's fun. It's a good time. Um, I definitely get to bring some... Uh, some aspects of my life into it which is great and uh yeah i'm very grateful what was your favorite part about playing your character favorite part about playing my character um well for one thing he he really contrasts the energy of a lot of the other ghosts a lot of the other ghosts are higher energy bigger than life characters you know very you know they're they're uh Oh, I don't even know how to describe it, but like bigger than life. They're just like, you know, and he's the opposite where he's just like looking at them. Like you are so dumb and I hate this. And I like smelling pizza and that's it, you know? And, and uh, it's nice to kind of be that, that voice that like, I feel like almost the audience is kind of siding with, which is fun. Um, and another big thing about this character that was also nervous about playing was, you know, it's nervous playing native American characters because you want, it to be represented properly and and it can be nervous to do that because I'm not in the writer's room. I'm not a consultant. I'm not Lenape. Uh, and but luckily our our showrunners hired an amazing 
uh, Native writer by the name of John Timothy, who's Muskogee Creek, to be in the writer's room, and also Joe Baker, who is our Lenape consultant, and he is the, uh, the, one of the creators of the uh, Lenape Center. Kind of a last question for you here. Obviously, you can't spoil anything, but what can we look <laughs> forward to in this season of Ghost? Oh, gosh, you can look forward to drama, chaos, lots of laughs, and lots of heart. I'm telling you, this show has so much heart that it it hits you when you don't realize. Like, and when I was um, growing up with Native Voices, uh, Randy Reinholz was the one who told me, like, in order to make them cry, you have to make them laugh. In order to make them laugh, you kind of have to make them a little sad, right? You have to hit them, hit them, hit them where 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 it's real. And I think this show does that really well. I think we we make things funny and light, and we talk about death in a very light way, which, in my opinion, is so healthy. I don't think we do that enough as a as a society. Mm -hmm. And um, but then also, I feel like we talk about things that are real and and scary, like death. We talk about love, and we talk about acceptance and. Uh, and so I, I love that about about the show. It's funny, but it has a lot of heart. Perfect. Thank you so much for answering all my questions. Of course. Thank you so much for having me.